Okay, I would like to start off by giving each of the presenters a chance to read their one-liner there and maybe give a short comment on that and then we can carry on with a bit of a discussion going forward. So if we can start in the same sequence as the presentation, so if you could do it first. Yeah, yeah just, just turn around and read. Yeah, because um, uh, my, talk, my talk is focused on the more check structure. So my main idea is uh, the snap uh, structure on the real system is mainly affected by the low orders of real polygon. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I think that so there is a one for stiffness of track and the influence thereof. Um, can we have... Your, your one sentence, and maybe why do you say that? Or uh, summarize your paper in one line. Okay. Hello. Uh, so my focus is on the real state of flexibility. So it's uh, like a fundamental research. So I just want to um, confirm or check whether the real state of flexibility can influence the real polygonization in the general sense. Originally. The first bending mode of the wheel set is suspected to, to make a main contribution, but after I, have, after I have done a lot of simulation, the first bending is not, was not excited. And I changed different scenarios. And finally, I found uh, in the case of a uh, uh, curved track with some very small radios, uh, the torsional mode of the wheel set uh, was ex effectively excited to influence the contact parameters and uh, therefore the development of the wheel polygonization. So that's the main finding. Um, yeah, and uh, this is kind of strange, uh, but uh, when I found that uh, Professor Robert, you, you got a similar result according to the title of your uh, presentation, I think that it would be very interesting. So I'm, I'm just looking forward to your presentation tomorrow. Yeah. Good, thank you. So, so there will be one, some, one by person in the audience tomorrow morning. <laughs> um, okay, if you can just give a bit of a one sentence, two liner feedback on what your focus is. Okay, everyone. Uh, my paper is about the well polygonization in champs, and uh, uh, later I mainly um, a new uh, a new conjecture of the mechanism uh, mechanism of the well polygonization is presented. As we all know, scholars worldwide have done a lot of uh, researches on the well polygonization, and uh, there are several different uh, different reasons can lead to the well polygonization. Now we think that the uh, mechanism for wheel polygonization is complex, yes. It's my, uh, when we uh, consider the uh, mechanism of wheel polygonization, we mainly consider four uh, facts. The first is the self-excitation. Excitation, uh, that is, um, the first is the self-excitation, yes, of the wheel contact error. Uh, then is the vertical. Uh, uh, then is the vertical normal load. We think that the vertical normal load uh, of the uh, it can can uh, influence the self excitation in uh, periodicity. Uh, then we think that the wavelengths or the, the depth of the wave can also uh, influence the vertical normal load and the speed and the speed and the stiffness of the real wheel also can uh, influence the uh, vertical normal load. In summary, we think that the uh, mechanism of wheel polynesian is similar to the uh, a correction cor 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 of the real. So uh, if you want to uh, learn more about it, you can uh, uh, refer, uh, refer to the uh, 142 paper in our CM conference, the, the, uh, CM conference because we, uh, we think that uh, uh, that's the uh, real population <coughs> 
we see we believe that the wheel polynesia is uh, uh, depended by the alteration, alteration of the not stable, uh, not stable uh, vibration and the stable contact. Uh, okay, that's all. Thank yeah, you. So there again, the wheel size and, and the whole logic behind the research, the reasons behind the research. Um, if we can have your um, feedback on, on just in summary of your focus of your work. Hello. Um, our works may mainly focus on the frequency of the wheel polarization, but not the wheel process of the wheel polarization. And based on the almost all the, all the wheel polarization events in the China's high speed railway, um, based on the statistical analysis, we, we found that the frequency is mainly, mainly related to the trend types, but not the uh, EMU types. It means that we may find the frequency in the, in the trend, but not in the, in the vertical itself. So we, we do a lot, of, uh, a lot of failed tests to find the, fr the frequencies. And in the, in the two-step test, we finally found that the step two in the as, as long as the bogey is put on the rail, the frequency will be generated. And in the spectrum, the amplitude of the, of the third bending mode of the rail is the largest. So we, 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 tend to, we tend to believe that the origin of the rail polarization in China has been a railway. That's all. So we can see in, in, in four papers quite a vast difference in focus areas, um, quite a different objective, you know, be it roading stock, be it track type, or the mix thereof. Do we have any other input from the audience? Any questions? Um, any debates? We've got um, Professor Zai. Yes. Uh, I have a question to the third uh, presenter, Miss uh, okay. <laughs> Xi. And in your conclusion, uh, there is a, a conclusion you say the, the ab abnormal vibration of car body uh, is mainly uh, due to the fifth order wheel polygon. But in general uh, sense, the high frequency wheel rail interaction due to wheel polygon can hardly transmit upward to the car body by isolation of two suspension system. So uh, why for such a high frequency vibration transmit to the car body? You have a concretion. <coughs> Okay, thank you for your question. Uh, you say that um, uh, my uh, conclusion is that uh, the abnormal vibration of the car body of uh, about uh, 35 hertz uh, vibration uh, is, uh, up, is uh, related, uh, related with the f uh, fifth order with the well, um, polygonization. Uh, that is... Um, uh, Okay, that is the uh, fifth, uh, five, uh, fifth order, fifth order polygonization is uh, mainly uh, uh, a main. Uh, okay, sorry, a main nigga. I think you can answer briefly in Chinese and he can translate. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, yes. Uh, uh, in the uh, t uh, vibration uh, test of the car body, we, uh, uh, we do the spectrum ana ana analysis, then uh, maybe uh, it's um, uh, 
um, maximum for me to uh, uh, analyze the uh, relationship between the well polling, uh, uh, the fifth uh, well polling, uh, fifth order pollination uh, uh, and the uh, car body vibration. Sorry, uh, I will uh, uh, this is uh, again uh, when I uh, after this. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, is there another question? Uh, um, <clears throat> my question is to the last presentation. You said that the uh, structure of the track determines the frequency of the <clears throat> uh, vibration. And one parameter, obviously, is as you sh have shown in the table, is this sleeper spacing, which other parameters of the track are important? Uh, hello? We, we have compared uh, the difference of the different uh, uh, stiffness of uh, support, the different temperature of the environment, and the different track types. Uh, it means uh, track under the, the slab track types. And the rust shoes, the, and the stapless uh, range a lot, but the frequency is almost the same. So we, we thought uh, it has a little to do with the uh, with stapless. And, uh, but uh, when we change the sleeper, sla sli sleeper span, the frequency change a lot. And we can, show, we can see from the sleeper span uh, change from 6, 630 to six. 650, the frequency has changed almost 100. So we, 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 say it's a, we think it's a main course. Thank you. Do we have another question? We've got, there's one in the back there. Yeah. Uh, from uh, actually, a follow up question from uh, the audience. Uh, you said you changed uh, the stiffness of the track. Can you be more specific? of how, how much do you change from, for example, the, the stiffness of the, the real pad or the stiffness of ballast, from, from how much to how much? And you find there's no correlation between the, 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 the wavelength and the, and the stiffness. Uh, I have changed, changed the stiffness from 20, 20 million Newton per, per meter to 120 meter Newton. So 20 to 120. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's basically uh, soft, real pad, right? Yeah, and, and the frequency has only changed. About yes, that, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. And maybe another question for... Very short. Yeah, very short one for the second presenter. Uh, you, you find kind of a correlation between the wheel set flexibility, the eigenfrequencies of wheel set and uh, the wavelengths of the polygonization, right? Uh, would you think uh, if you put the wheel set on the, on the rail, then the contact force between the wheel and the rail would be different from the, the eigenfrequencies of the wheel set? I'm sorry, I didn't get you. So you have, for example, you have 25 hertz, or uh, what's your first uh, bending order for your wheel set? Uh, 70. 70. Uh, when you put your wheel set on the on rail, do you think the, the contact force, the, eigen, uh, the, the frequency, uh, content of the contact force would change. So that, that's not on a 70. It will be higher or it will be le lower, or it will stay the same as 70. Sorry, I didn't. Still uh, didn't it seems it. like that question will stand over for afterwards, and you can make sure that Sorry. you both understand <laughs> the details. We can later. Yes, okay. So with that, I would like to thank all our four presenters, Shesha, for that. And good luck with your research. <laughs>